As EVs become more popular, public charging is getting more common, more accessible, and more popular too. But is it also getting more expensive? It certainly feels like it, at least in some places, at least some of the time. We're going to talk about some of the reasons that could be. I'm joined today by Mark from the Tesla Life, who has some experience for some amount of time with electric vehicles, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. So uh, I saw this po question posed over on Reddit the other day. The question was, "Why is it me supercharging? not supercharging, but fast charging generally has gotten really expensive. And even for Teslas, it's gotten more expensive. In the early days, I think it was something like, it was ridiculous, seven cents, 10 cents a kilowatt hour. And it went up over time. And now I've seen Tesla chargers as high as 35 to 50 cents at peak times in peak places. And now only as low as I think 12 cents is the lowest I've seen recently. I've seen some reports of ones in Canada that have gotten under 10 cents Canadian, uh, rarely. Uh, but once in a while. So DC fast chargers, do you have any theories as to why they've gotten more expensive before I go? Well, they started to realize what the charge, answer? they've yeah. certainly started to realize what the, uh, the charging fees are. Um, high demand um, at certain times of the day, uh, you've got peak hours uh, that the electric company, the grid puts out. And of course, different jurisdictions have different prices at different points of the day. So uh, a place in California at uh, 5 p.m. is certainly going to be different than a place in Idaho at 2 a.m. So <laughs> what's happened now is that um, Tesla and other groups, uh, other third-party charging sites, have started to roll those into their pricing models because, of course, they're getting hit with those, those charges. You have to stay somewhat profitable in order to stay in business. And uh, that's that's why we're seeing these adjustments that have happened. I remember, uh, as you mentioned with Tesla in the early days when it was ridiculously cheap, um, and then the prices doubled overnight and everyone lost their minds that, oh my gosh, this is, no, no, it's, it's just reality. You were getting undercharged because Tesla was, was pushing, the adoption of EVs, of supercharging, of traveling around the country, and they were paying the extra price. But of course, if you start putting millions of cars on the road, you can only do that for so long before you could bankrupt yourself. That's a problem we've seen with companies like Neo. They're saying, oh, we will we will swap out your battery for seven bucks, 20, 10 bucks, whatever. It costs more than that to charge it. Forget all the equipment and machinery, forget the real estate, forget all the hassles. It's it costs more than that. If the companies, well, no, we'll do it forever. No, they'll do it until they run out of money because that's how a lot of those too good to be true deals work. If you could bring in a your P85D with 10% state of charge and get a full charge for five bucks, that's not sustainable. But in the early days, you need those low rates to entice buyers, to get them comfortable with the system in the first place before, you know what they say, the first hit's always free, Mark. <laughs> That next hit, I'm going to need you to dance a little bit. No, I don't think we'll go that far. But on the electric vehicles subreddit, which is only mildly cancer, uh, it's not as bad as some of the subreddits, but it's pretty bad. There was this fantastic comment from a user named Odd84, who had a bunch of reasons listed, and we'll go through them. Thank you, Odd84, not knowing that I was about to steal your content, but thank you. Anyway, go show some love. I don't know what you got to do. Interest rates went up by five and a half percent, which means the charging station operators uh, need more cash flow to service their debt. And they want to use less debt versus cash for expansion. Let's start there. That's a big one. Interest rates went up. Your cost just that means just your whole cost of doing business is higher than it was. Yeah, jump by five and a half percent. And all of a sudden you're left with making larger payments just to cover that interest. And when we say five and a half, well, five and a half percent, that's not much. That's one twentieth. No, no, no. They went from like 2% to like seven and a half percent. They tripled. Interest rates tripled is a, is a better way to put it. If you look at what that does to long-term debt, it doubles, triples your payment. It makes it outrageous. And that's something that these companies cannot avoid unless they're paying cash, in which case they expand more slowly. The next point was 
Uh, venture capital funding also pulled back significantly. So outside investors are subsidizing less of the cost of the networks. And we have seen that. Venture capital uh, is not flowing to the EV sector the way it was just a few years ago. Now all the money's going into AI. So how do you- Yeah, and those those markets change on a monthly basis. Uh, there's there's new flavors of the week that appear. And of course, uh, that, that changes how people invest. So that's not a surprise either. Without a doubt. Uh, car manufacturers aren't pouring as much cash into charging networks. You may notice that new EVs today come with fewer charging perks than in prior years. That means more money yet has to be paid by the users of the networks. Yeah, there, there was times when it wasn't that long ago. What was it maybe a year or two ago when the big three plus a few more said, we're going to build out a network ourselves. And then they all joined uh, Tesla's network and that seemed to quietly go away. I don't <laughs> think they're doing that anymore because this is cheaper and easier. We're all tightening our belts. So... I don't know. Fortunately, my belt just gets tighter on its own. That's weird. <laughs> I should. How does that happen? Uh, pizza. That's how it happens. <laughs> Being on the road too much and not having access to my own kitchen is what happens. So that is a big factor. This is one I hadn't considered, though. Labor, permits, inspections, and insurance have all increased the pri in price drastically. This means a higher price is needed to get the same payback on new stations. Yeah, your stations cost more to build. Your parts cost more than they did five years ago. Your labor costs more. Permits is a small part of it. Insurance I can't speak to. I don't know what kind of corporate insurance you would have on a facility like that. But I can tell you that all those other things are, I mean, I, I don't want to name names, but there are companies that I work with that charge rates that are astronomical. I've told you about, I've complained about the gutter guy who wants to charge $800 uh, for an hour and a half gutter cleaning job. And my friend, you are not a doctor or a, a lawyer. You clean my gutters. It is not my job alone to put your children through college. So I'm going to... Besides, you cleaned them last year. How bad of a job did you do that I need you back already? <laughs> <sighs> so that's fun. Um, then we've got... There it is. Uh, utility companies have increased their rates. So, you know, when inflation is high, those increase in rates are larger. The power company has to pay more for their labor, for their parts, for their cable, for their copper. That's a real cost. Yeah, it, it's a cascading effect. Everybody's affected by these interest rates tripling, and they're all looking to balance their sheets, their, their financials. And of course, the only way to do that is to either reduce service or charge your customers more or both. And now to the point you were making, uh, a large portion of the utility uh, bill for a charging site is the peak demand charge. So it's the highest draw of the entire site during any 15 minute period during the month, not the kilowatt hours delivered. Now this varies uh, by location. Different utilities will have different deals set up. Um, some, some buyers, some especially large industrial buyers uh, are not as subjected to these swings, but yeah, you could see, um, there are times when you could see peak demand at $7 a kilowatt that adds an in, a instant seven grand a month to your bill versus 700 last month. So those are, uh, and that varies depending where you are drastically, but peak charging can be expensive. And I've seen people say, well, Tesla can just put a, a mega pack at each location. Yeah. yeah, those are free. Those are free. Okay, so first of all, those are millions of dollars each, and one would probably be would definitely be enough to handle peak shaving at a location. But also, you need the space for it, and then you need the uh, the wiring. For, you know, the the utility hookup, the permits. I mean, it is. There's. And then, and then say uh, that maybe shaves off three or four or five of those instances where you hit seven thousand dollar bill. Guess what? You know, $35,000 or a million. Which one should I choose? I right. don't know. It's tough. It's tough. But if money was free, and this is no discredit to viewers, I don't expect everyone to know everything. That's why you're here, is to, I mean, let let us read the news for you and do all the research. I had someone get very upset with something that was said on the show last week saying the topic was how could GM 
make a $35,000 Silverado. And the conclusion was by losing money on it and also not selling it for $35,000. And uh, I had a very angry comment saying, oh, now you, now some random guy knows how much they, it costs them to build that truck. You don't know. They could be making a profit. <laughs> they can't. Um, and we know because GM has told us they can't. My source for that is GM's financial reports and public statements. So, but I don't expect everyone to know everything. I expect them to watch and subscribe and hit the like button. Please, I beg of you all, just hit the buttons. Doesn't matter which buttons. I'm a fan of Alt F4. Uh huh. Copper thieves. Now, oh no, not the copper thieves. <laughs> the copper thieves are stealing public charging station cables at an increasing rate. Each can cost several thousand dollars to replace, uh, which the customers of the network inevitably pay for. You pay for it in downtime. You pay for it in materials and labor. The customer is going to end up paying for that eventually. Yeah, people say, why can't they stop the copper thieves? Why can't they put up a monitoring system, some cameras, something to something to call the police? Guess what? All those things cost money too. If you've mm -hmm. got a hundred different charging stations in a certain area, that's that's that cost times a hundred. Because you know what? If the copper thieves notice that one station is well monitored, they're going to move to the one across the street that's not well monitored. Mm -hmm. That's so you got you, yeah. you, you to do them all. You got to do them all. And the problem with cameras is people can still put can still cover their faces and their license plates. It is cheaper to build a taller ladder than a taller wall. So make that wall as tall as you want. They're still coming over it with their crimes, their, their ways to steal your copper. And copper theft is not extremely common, but it doesn't have to be to result in higher costs. I saw one person say, no, no, copper theft is very common. I know of seven stations that were hit in Houston. I'm like, right, that's one thief who hit seven stations. So still not super common. I haven't seen it myself. I know it exists, and it absolutely does drive up the costs. And then we've got almost to the end here. Electrify America in particular is suffering from the poor reliability of their charging stations. When they're unavailable, fewer can charge, which means their costs are spread out among fewer customers, raising the prices, and they're investing millions of dollars replacing that hardware that's unreliable with new hardware, which means even more costs are incurred. Yeah, imagine paying for a number of different pieces of equipment and find they're not up to spec or they don't operate the way they're supposed to, so you can't charge as many people the, the money to make payments on that machinery, and you got to double up your debt by buying new equipment. Yes, and I do blame Electrify America for their woes. They knew which corners they were cutting and why they did it, and it was a conscious decision. No one forced them to do anything. They chose that addiction. So, guys, just get past it. But the truth is, it does cost more. Another missing element from this, and if you can think of any other missing elements, Mark, get, get them in your head because we'll be getting to you in a second here. And for those of you at home scoring along, let us know in the comments what's missing, is that these are for-profit companies. They expect to make a profit. When gas stations put in power handles. Yes, they want you to go inside and use the convenience store, but if you're going to be using their charger instead of their gas pump, they do make a little bit of money on the gas pump. They expect to make a little bit of money on the charger too. I do not fault them for that. That profit motive is the reason they built them in the first place. Let's not get angry about that. What else are we missing? Well, you've got the uh, people that own the land. The, the leasers of the land, guess what? Their businesses are being hit on all sides. So their lease to you to put your chargers on it, they're going to up the price the next time it comes to renewal. And that's going to hit everyone's pocketbook again. There are places where they will put in, where they are happy to get chargers. I saw in San Diego, there's superchargers next to the Cheesecake Factory. That seems like a good combination. But in other places in, where was it? Crescent City, maybe. There was, was it Crescent City? I'm not sure. I, maybe. It's by the mall. And it's not a very thriving mall. So what happens is everyone goes to the charger and then goes inside and uses their bathroom and doesn't pay it any, doesn't buy anything because there's really nothing to buy that you would necessarily want. They don't have packs of gum or soda pop. 
It's a, uh, there is a food court, but it's not a very good food court. And so what happens is this means it costs more. So of course, places like that will be less excited about giving out free rent for that spot. They'll want to charge for it so they can recoup their costs so they can make some money themselves. Yeah. And I, and I think that's valid and important. Any other thoughts we're missing? I'd like to see what uh, what you out there have thought of that we haven't put in the I'm comments. Sure I'm sure there's some good ones, and I'm very excited to see what they are. Let me jump over here real quick and see if there's anything super obvious here. Nah, it's just people yelling about uh, drug addicts and uh, copper theft. Can't blame you. Can't blame you. Uh, yeah, and power does cost more than it used to. Um, land costs are not going down. Labor costs <laughs> have not gone down. But I think the overall catalyst of this certainly was the interest rates it, because it's hit everything that everybody uses. And that uh, has cascaded to absolutely all markets and everyone ends up paying that triple interest rates and uh, the debt that the services. Yeah. And I get it. Drug addiction is terrible. Uh, so in the comments, let us know your favorite drugs. I uh, have heard good things <laughs> about Lipitor. I don't know. I'm not uh, part of the scene anymore. So you guys, uh, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it in them comments below. Let us know. what We're going to we get sued, about? Brian. We are How going we to get sued. <laughs> Who's we? It's my channel. You got nothing to worry about. You're... Uh, yeah. So uh, in the comments, like, subscribe, do what you got to do, all that good stuff. And uh, stay tuned. Stay juicy. Uh, you know what you're doing. Uh, head, head on over to the, uh, the Tesla Life with Mark and Patrick and Casey. Have some fun over there. And uh, I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop.